Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Some breaking news coming out of Norman, Oklahoma, as the Oklahoma Sooners fill the offensive coordinator position, going with Seth Luttrell and Joe John Finley in-house, elevating these two as co-offensive coordinators for the Oklahoma Sooners after Jeff Levy takes the head coaching job at Mississippi State. And the first thing that comes to my mind is this is not necessarily the flashiest hire Oklahoma could have made. We hopped on 24 hours ago and talked about some young up and coming offensive play callers that Oklahoma could have gone with guys like Sean Lewis at Colorado, Brendan Marion at UNLV. But this is a hire that makes a lot of sense for a lot of different reasons. One, you looked at this Oklahoma offense, it was clearly going in the right direction and can, Having that consistency in the verbiage, in the language, in the scheme for guys like Jackson Arnold heading into the 2024 season, heading into the SEC makes a lot of sense. But the second thing that comes to mind is you look at some of the top programs, kind of the, the blueprint of what you want your program to look like. The Georgia Bulldogs, the Alabama Crimson Tide. What did Georgia do when they lost their defense coordinator, Dan Landing, to the Oregon Ducks? They just elevated Glenn Schumann. And then last year when they lost their offensive coordinator, they just elevated Mike Bobo. Hiring with from within has been a very popular choice for these programs like Georgia and Alabama to have that continued success in Oklahoma, kind of going to that form of thinking in terms of we want to keep this culture, we want to keep this scheme in place. And so we're going to, if it ain't broke, we're not going to fix it. We're going to elevate Seth Luttrell. We're going to elevate Joe John Finley in a lot of ways. This makes a lot of sense. Really excited to get into this one. Before we do, just want to say thank you to you guys. A shout out to the Oklahoma fans. You guys, a lot of you got y'all nailed it in the comment section when we talked about this earlier yesterday morning. In terms of Seth Luttrell, it makes a lot of sense to kind of hire with from within and kind of keep this same scheme heading forward into that 2024 year. So shout out you guys. You guys have been very, very supportive to the boys. Cannot thank you guys enough. If you do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Now that we got our offensive coordinator in place, eyes are focused to the transfer portal. Again, I'll be trying to break down as many of the roster moves for the Oklahoma Sooners as I can. Again, appreciate you guys rocking with the fellas. Without further ado, let's get into this. And I want to talk about what this is going to look like, this co-offensive coordinator hire. From what I read, and this is a brief reading out of me, as this news just kind of broke 30 minutes ago, Sounds like Seth Luttrell will be the one calling the plays. Joe John Finley, also the co-OC here. And this one makes a lot of sense, right? Seth Luttrell is a veteran calling plays. A ton of success calling plays at Arizona, North Carolina, Indiana. <coughs> Indiana, A really successful offensive tenure at North Texas. This is a guy that's called a lot of plays. He's comfortable calling plays. And then what do you have with Joe John Finley? One of the more exciting up-and-coming offensive minds in college football who doesn't have experience calling plays yet, but a guy that can sit back and learn from Seth Luttrell. And when it is his time to be calling the plays for the Oklahoma Sooners, he's going to be ready. And again, you look at the blueprint guys set like Kirby smart. They have younger assistants in place to kind of fill the voids. When you're a program that's winning 10 plus games, like you expect Oklahoma programs are going to come after your coordinators, just like Mississippi state did with Jeff Levy. It's not crazy to think in two more years, if Oklahoma has a ton of success, Seth Luttrell is going to be finding another head coaching job as well. So you look at Joe John Finley as a guy that potentially would step into that offensive play calling role. So from a program building standpoint, I think this makes a lot of sense. And then you look at the continued scheme of this offense and kind of continuing the progress that you saw year two under Brent Venables with this offense, you kind of want to keep that in place. Right, Going back and looking at the numbers, this is an Oklahoma offense that put up 43 points per game. That was number two in the country, 500 total yards per game, number three in the country, 6.6 .6 yards per play, number six in the country. This Oklahoma offense was trending in the right direction. And yes, were there frustrations in terms of the play calling of Jeff Levy at certain points this season? 100% absolutely. We'll get to that in a little bit. But on aggregate, you take a look at this Oklahoma offense. It's going in the right direction, and what really excites you, if you're an Oklahoma fan, you're going to have probably more talent than you had in 2023 in this 2024 season. Jackson Arnold ideally stepping in as that quarterback in 2024. We all know how talented Jackson Arnold is. You look at guys like Andrew Anthony, like Jaden Gibson, Gavin Sawchunk, all really stepping up in this Oklahoma offense. 
it makes sense for Brent Venables to look at this offense and say, yeah, we want to just continue the progress that we made from that 2022 year to the 2023 year. And we want to build more in 2024. And if you were to go hire an offensive coordinator outside the program, some of that progress kind of gets halted, right? You come in, you have to learn a new scheme. You have to learn new verbiage. The young players need to learn a new system of that offense. And that's always, there's always some growing pains that you see. And do you want to have growing pains when you're going for your first year in the SEC against a schedule that is going to be extremely difficult? Not really. So I think Oklahoma, again, although not the flashiest hire that you could have made, I think the hire that makes the most sense in following that blueprint of what dominant programs do with their coordinators, you look at some things that you might want to change or some slight tweaks, right? You're going to have some tweaks. This is a different play caller that's coming in. What are some things that you want to pay attention to for Oklahoma on offense in 2024? One, and a lot of you guys have voiced this in the comment section, maybe getting rid of some of these lateral kind of these swing passes in that scheme and trying to be a little bit more aggressive downfield. This Oklahoma offense averaged 9.5 yards per play. That was number six in the country, but at times, right, in that Kansas game, in that Oklahoma State game, the offense seemed to shell up a little bit. And Dylan Gabriel wasn't really let off the leash to push the ball down the field. You probably want to see a little bit more of that. When this Oklahoma offense struggled in 2023, in my eyes, it was when the offense kind of shelled up and wasn't attacking vertically down the field, made it very easy for that defense to squeeze down because a lot of the throws were not going 10 plus yards from the line of scrimmage. And so you want to see maybe a little bit more in Seth Luttrell experience with that air raid, maybe space defenses out a little bit more and force them to cover that deeper third. I think that's one thing that you're certainly looking for. I think time of possession is another thing I have in my notes. Yes, Oklahoma scores 43 points per game in 2023, number two in the country, but would sometimes put their defense in bad spots because they don't really control the ball. They're either going a minute down the field and scoring a touchdown or a three and out in, in 45 seconds. And that puts your defense in a bad spot. And you look at Brent Venables in the direction he might want to go with this offense, defensive-minded head coach saying, hey, we want to put our defense in better spots to dominate and take over games. How do you do that? Maybe getting the run game going a little bit, controlling the time possession, using, using tempo, but using tempo a little bit more smart, not just blindly using tempo on every single drive and not really controlling the, the, the ball and the time of possession marks. So you might see some changes in that. And then the last one that you guys have really brought to my attention, Joe John Finley, coaching the tight ends in 2023. Maybe you see a little bit more usage of the tight ends in this 2024 offense. Again, there's some talent in that tight end room. And it never really seemed to get utilized. And when it was utilized, it seemed like that was when the offense was humming at its best. So a few things that maybe you see some tweaks in. I, I had one more thing, gap scheme run game. I felt like when they went to the, that zone blocking, it wasn't as great when they went gap skin and they pulled guys over and kind of tried to be physical at the line of scrimmage. That's to me where they had the most success in the run game. So that was one more thing that I had in my notes. But at the end of the day, you want, you had this offense was cooking in 2023, especially at certain points in this game. And if you can continue to work on the consistency of this offense and get it at that top gear more consistently in 2024 with more talent, I think it makes a lot of sense. So for those reasons, really big fan of this hire. Again, not a flashy one, but I think one that made the most sense. Really good move for the Sooners. I'm fired up about it. Would love to hear from you guys in the comment section about it. Seth Luttrell, Joe John Finley taking over the offense. Appreciate you guys rocking with the boys as usual. If you do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel, and we'll talk to y'all.